Yeah, so uh, let's begin the webinar uh, uh, about APIs and how uh, Bangladesh banks can benefit by using APIs and the open banking for the, for the benefit of the Bangladesh uh, uh, financial sector. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining for this webinar organized by VS1 and WSO2 in partnership for the Bangladeshi banking sector. Uh, uh, we as VS1 uh, is a WSO2 partner, WSO2 being the world's number one open source middleware integration platform provider. We have a very strong partnership and VS1 as a global company headquartered in Singapore uh, have started our operation in Bangladesh in 2019. And now we are spreading, uh, expanding our offering to the Bangladeshi customers. We have our local operation in Dhaka. Uh, and, and this is uh, the area that we wanted to bring it to Bangladeshi banking sector to see how we can benefit, how you can benefit from uh, APIs, integrations, middleware, and overall in open banking. Uh, Chris, shall we move to the next slide? Yeah, so I'm Vajira Vanikasekar. I'm the CEO and director of VS1 World Singapore. And I have my Bangladeshi team in this call, uh, Komal Hassan and uh, Rakib uh, Lincoln. Uh, and I'm now handing over the session to Sashika from uh, uh, WSO2 start the proceeding. Thank you very much, Vajra. Um, from WSO2, let me also welcome everyone uh, to this webinar. Uh, we are very excited to uh, talk about um, uh, how APIs can play a big role in digitizing uh, the Bangladeshi banking sector. Uh, I believe um, uh, every, uh, every era is an is a interesting era. Uh, for the banking sector, but uh, particularly uh, the times we are in with the global pandemic, uh, I think particularly this time has really pushed uh, banks, especially um, in, the, in the South Asian region to become much more agile and much more digital uh, to be able to operate as well as continue services to uh, customers uh, within these difficult uh, times and uh, limitations. Uh, and I think uh, APIs will play um, a significant role uh, in uh, digitizing uh, existing uh, banking products and services, as well as um, increasing the agility uh, that uh, within which banks can operate. Uh, so with that, uh, we are very excited to talk about uh, the journey that we have taken uh, with banks over many years, um, <clears throat> uh, helping them uh, to um, expose APIs uh, and do API-led integrations uh, to both reduce costs, but also grow their revenue streams. Uh, I'm Seshika Fernando. Uh, I'm the vice president and head of uh, the banking and financial services sector at WSO2. Uh, and uh, joining me and, and doing the bulk of the presentation today uh, is Christopher Davy, who's joining us from the UK. Uh, he heads solution architecture uh, globally for integration uh, and has helped many banks uh, in Europe as well as uh, in other regions uh, on various integration projects, especially API-led open banking projects. So. Um, uh, I, I believe you are in good hands today, and um, I would like to uh, hand over the uh, control to Chris uh, to take us through the content. Hi, thanks, Sashi, and thanks for the intro. Um, hi, everyone. Welcome to the presentation today. So, um, as Sashi said, I'm going to take you through some of the aspects of, you know, um, how APIs are used within the banking sector, the sort of work we've been involved in uh, over the years, um, I myself uh, took part in a number of the uh, consultations and workshops with the open banking implementation entity in the UK. Uh, so I'm quite familiar with uh, the implementation and rollout uh, of the sort of PSD2 regulations and what they uh, entailed. Uh, and also, you know, looking forward to uh, how they're going to be used in the future and, and what we what we can do with them. 
so without further ado, let's, uh, let's jump in. So um, we'll do a brief intro and uh, apologies if this is uh, teaching people stuff they already know, but um, uh, all of this isn't possible without API. So I want to make sure everyone has a, uh, um, the same understanding of what APIs and uh, what they can, they can do. So why are we uh, using APIs? So the main aspect of APIs is, to me, is I like to keep it simple, is, is accessing data. You know, this is all about getting data uh, to the right point at the right time uh, in a secure uh, and robust manner so that you can, you know, deliver your new business services or interact with your customer or partners. Uh, and APIs are the key sort of vehicle uh, for doing that in all of these uh, innovations and uh, open data, smart data, open finance, those aspects, it's all driven, um, going to be all be driven by APIs and exposing that data for people to access. So that's the main aspect uh, of an API is getting data to the right place. Um, so, you know, what sort of value are you looking to add? And Session, you sort of mentioned a few of these. It's, you know, APIs are key in sort of digital transformations and have been for years, you know, at different levels with different use cases. Um, they enable you to uh, abstract your older systems, expose services to new parts of your organization, expose services to third parties or end customers, uh, and sort of rapidly innovate in that sort of space. So this is where you're sort of getting uh, some high level benefits and we'll go into some more of that on some later slides, uh, increased agility and improving customer and sort of internal worker experience as well. You know, we, we tend to forget about that. There's a lot of focus on the customer, but you know, enabling your workforce to, to utilize APIs or API driven applications uh, can also sort of help uh, improve and digitize your business. So what does a good API uh, look like? Uh, well, you know, the, uh, the simplest thing is it works. <laughs> and what I mean by that is it's fit for purpose and meets the business goal. It's very easy to design an API, throw up lots of information to people, but it's not really what they need or it's not in the right format or the security is wrong or, you know, they have to, you know, post process it. You know, there, there's lots of different aspects um, to, you know, making sure you've got the right API for the right purpose. And that's where having a robust API platform that you can easily manipulate and expose new APIs for the right uh, reasons and to the right audience is absolutely sort of key there. But fundamentally, you've got to get, you know, this has got to meet the business goal. What are you actually trying to do? It's not just about, I want to expose random data. It's you've got a business purpose there. Either you're trying to give people faster payments or better access to their account information, or you're giving a partner uh, access to uh, statistics or something like that. But the API has got to be uh, designed to meet the business goal. Uh, another key thing is uh, it's got to be flexible, reliable and easy to access. So this is around having good service levels. And this all came up uh, during the PSD2 uh, discussions as well as although it's not part of the core regulation, you know, there was lots of things about good target levels for availability, uh, accessibility. You want it well documented. You want people to be able to test it or third parties to test APIs. Um, and, and try it out and, and, and get access to it and, and make sure that they can self-serve and all those sort of good things, which means that, you know, you've not got expensive or complicated onboarding processes where they've got to contact someone and get some credentials from them via email and then go back and forth. You know, so having uh, an easy to access, readily available API um, that you can uh, use is, is key. Um, interoperable and secure. Uh, secure is a bit of a, a given, but it is so important. You know, that was the key thing around a lot of the, uh, and it is a key thing around a lot of those, uh, the standards coming up around, um, you know, opening up more data across different verticals, not just in the financial sector. You know, identity, um, access management authorization, absolutely uh, critical to make sure that you're only showing the right data to the right person. Um, because, that, uh, you know, in the banking sector, exposing someone else's account information to the wrong person could be absolutely disastrous. So security is absolutely key. And interoperable, again, seems like a bit of a no brainer, but, you know, it, it's about um, making sure you're using open standards and protocols that people can 
can can work with uh, easily. So you know, if you've got your own bespoke formats and complex data structures and things like that, it makes it harder for people to use and consume your API. So using open standards, open definitions, things that people are used to interacting with really helps uh, ensure that that, uh, that API will get used as much as, uh, as possible. So that's like a, a, a very high level overview. We're not going into, you know, there's lots more detail around, uh, you know, different types of protocols and different styles of API. We've got streaming, GraphQL, et cetera. We won't go into those today. If you're interested in those, there's, there's more information on our website and uh, uh, other webinars we've done. But uh, today, just wanted to make sure we understood the concept at a high level. So going to go through a few use cases of uh, how uh, we've seen APIs used in the banking industry uh, with some of the uh, banks we've worked with. So Kanaska Bank um, was a, a, a real uh, success story from a sort of a traditional data uh, digital transformation perspective. Um, they improved their uh, processes. They uh, all added automation. They digitized legacy services uh, and, you know, uh, gave uh, better service to customers uh, through doing so. So, you know, they really, you know, they're being you know, the 12th largest bank, uh, private bank in India. You know, they've got lots of customers and getting um, to a stage where they've got that automation, they've got that, uh, those digital services and the ability to develop and evolve more was absolutely crucial to them. So, you know, got massive increases in, in productivity uh, and efficiency uh, just by um, implementing uh, API management and a good integration strategy uh, to move them forward in their digital transformation journey. So we've also got um, uh, BDO in the, the Philippines. Um, now, their sort of uh, key um, implementations here are around developing a new channel, offering real-time uh, payment services to their customers uh, and improving that customer experience uh, and efficiency there, um, making it easier to, to do business or customers to do business with the bank, as well as um, um, using those APIs to uh, increase their ability to work with, with, with their partners and share data and services with their partners. Again, improving their um, their capabilities that they and services that they can offer their customers, improving efficiencies in onboarding or account creation. Those sort of things are all, all aspects where easier sharing of information and APIs makes those uh, activities much uh, simpler to handle. Uh, Wells Fargo, uh, again, um, a very large bank uh, in the uh, US. Um, they had a very extensive API uh, strategy um, increasing, you know, the level of services uh, to their end users, uh, really sort of at the forefront of a, the digital bank where, you know, users could get all of the services and uh, capabilities their bank, you know, online or through different channels, mobile, etc. And all of that was facilitated by uh, delivering uh, APIs on our uh, API platform. So this was... Um, you know, absolutely crucial to their uh, their growth and their, um, uh, their their sort of in keeping their market share increasing it, um, and also working again uh, like some of the others, working with that partner ecosystem, enabling faster onboarding, uh, enabling them to offer richer and deeper services to their customers, making them stand out in the market against other banks and service providers. So these are some sort of high level. Uh, examples um, of what can be done. Uh, we've got some more later, uh, but what I'm going to go through now is um, a little bit more detail of some of those aspects I've just mentioned around the stages of, of API adoption. So there's sort of three key stages that we see uh, with our customers um, in most sectors, but um, especially in the financial sector, You've got the internal use, that digital transformation aspect. You've got extending their uh, and, and simplifying their integrations and interactions with their existing partners. And then you've got the more forward uh, thinking view, the, the more progressive view of uh, ex 
extending their external use with new partners and new ecosystems uh, going forward. So if we look at the uh, internal use, um, you know, this, as I said, is really the sort of more traditional uh, digital transformation. How do you expose legacy services and data? How do you automate existing processes? How do you abstract some of that complexity from end users or mobile applications and providing that really robust uh, integration architecture that means that you can rapidly grow and expand new services, new digital services, while at a different pace transforming uh, your, your systems uh, behind or obfuscating some of the more uh, complex aspects of you know, the core banking platforms and, and services and data that, that's behind that. So this uh, sort of internal use also um, uh, from an API perspective is there to uh, enable the easy adoption of new channels, sort of mobile, web, kiosk, et cetera, where you can provide your services uh, through different sort of front end mediums to your uh, end consumers and try and hit a wider, uh, wider audience. audience. Uh, so some, uh, some examples, um, are, uh, as I said, in all, automating the internal processes, uh, oh, sorry, took too many times. Um, and it's sort of expanding those customer channels. So they're, they're sort of the, the key aspects of sort of the internal use. If we move on to external use with uh, existing partners, so whether you're working with, you know, Forex dealers, stockbrokers, or other partners providing your services, um, using APIs to improve your data uh, sharing with them, offer new services and options where you can collaborate more uh, expand your service catalog or or just make that interaction easier uh, is is pretty key um, also working with large corporate customers sort of comes into this space as well because how you deal with an end retail customer and how you deal with a large corporate are very very different uh, and you might need to integrate um, uh, with their systems or they might need to integrate with yours and providing the right api the right access with the right security really means that you can deliver better services uh, to those key uh, corporate clients, streamlining their financial processing, uh, enabling better decision making, more real time data, more real time decisioning. Uh, all of that really helps providing that absolutely uh, cutting edge service to your uh, to your end end customers. So before we move on to uh, the last part here, one thing we wanted to sort of highlight is if you look over the last uh, last uh, last ten years or so, um, the if you look at the sort of market share across banks, payment firms, and, and fintechs, obviously the the as you can see on this graph from the Economist, uh, that share is changing, and banks are losing ground to the payment firms and fintechs, and this is really um, you know. The key thing to sort of take away is, you know, the, 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 the approach you've got to take here is how do you make sure that you are working with those um, uh, payment firms, those fintechs, so that ecosystem to try and um, make sure that you keep as much of that sort of market share as possible, uh, you know, providing better services yourself uh, and making sure that you're competitive in this market because the ecosystem's getting bigger. Um, if you're not providing same levels of service or the same types of service that people can get elsewhere, um, you're either going to sort of lose customers uh, or, you know, not grow at the speed you want. So really looking at how um, these sort of third parties and fintechs are using, you know, APIs and regulations like PSD2 to, to grow uh, and to build those new businesses and how to get involved in them is absolutely crucial. And that sort of leads on to that, that, that third stage where you're looking for opportunities to work more extensively with this wider ecosystem as it grows. Um, so, again, having those APIs um, available so that it's easier to share that data and services and generate that innovation with those new partners. You know, there's lots of, uh, lots of data opening up 
uh, across the board. And it's not just about the financial data, it's how do you take the data that's been exposed via these APIs, um, look at it with other data sets, uh, and how does that enable you to provide better services or newer services or um, better offerings to your, your end customers uh, and businesses that you're working with? Um, and, you know, you can achieve this in a couple of different ways. You know, you can sort of uh, give this sort of private access APIs where, you know, you sort of vet and select um, companies to work with. You can give um, more open access, simplifying that onboarding, uh, doing automated verification and validation um, to make sure partners can easily onboard to consume your APIs makes it um, a lot faster for them to get get access to and start innovating on that. Now, obviously, you might wonder, well, you, you're just opening that up and uh, how's that helping your business? You know, at the, this level where you're offering maybe premium data or premium data services, as I said, we'll look at some examples later, you know, these can all be monetized in various different ways. So, you know, you can generate new revenue streams working with these, uh, these fintechs and businesses who want to leverage your data to provide additional services with other data sources they may have. And therefore, you know, you, you can grow your business while still working uh, with what look like, you know, challenges to your market share. So these are all things that you've got to uh, sort of consider going forward about, you know, how APIs are going to help you uh, develop that business. Um, so we're going to go for a quick poll at this point uh, for, um, our attendees. So if you can um, uh, answer on the poll, uh, which stage do you think your bank is at when it comes to API adoption, either, you know, internal use, uh, external with existing partners, or that sort of wider ecosystem uh, engagement uh, stage, that would be really good. And we'll give you an, uh, a minute or so to, uh, uh, to fill that in. Okay, um, assuming that's closed, uh, it looks like we have, do have a couple of people in, uh, uh, in the initial stages and one already in the final stage. Um, so that's, uh, that's interesting to see. And I think this is, you know, and, ah, there we go. Sorry, some more results coming in. Um, yeah. So bulk seem to be in the sort of the second stage where they're working, you know, they've done internal and working with partners and a couple uh, moving through into stage three. Cool. Thank you very much. So um, right, we'll, um, we'll move on to the next element. This is what are the business models relevant to each stage? So <clears throat> we've talked to um, you know, the sort of aspects you do, but what sort of benefits do they add to the business uh, at each of those different stages? So if we're looking at in internal use and say Kanaska Bank was a, a big example here where you're doing that workflow improvement, the business benefits you're looking at uh, doing there is uh, improving your productivity, um, achieving uh, virtualization, centralization, um, improving your risk management, improving automation, which means that you're delivering services more reliably and robustly with less, uh, with less error. All of those aspects driven sort of by modern uh, delivery techniques, but you know, you've got APIs at the, at the core of that. Um, and expanding customer channels, um, you know, these enable you to do business uh, faster with your, um, uh, with your customers, you know, you can, using APIs, reuse services and stuff a lot simpler, therefore you're cutting costs, but also this enables you to boost your revenue. So you're adding new services like BDO, adding their sort of uh, real-time payment services, increasing their touch points and launching these sort of uh, digital uh, banking experience to your end customers. So not only are you cutting costs, that you're, you're increasing uh, your services and value to your end customer and hopefully increasing your customer base at the same time. So if we're looking at um, the stage two where you're working with existing partners, again, you're getting that um, cut, 
uh, the cost cutting uh, and operational efficiency improvements, um, improving the uh, ability to share services. Um, but at this stage as well, you can still boost your revenue. You can still um, look at new business services. You can exploit, monetize, uh, and effectively sell your services uh, that you provide or your data um, to third parties and partners uh, to improve your uh, improve your business. Uh, with the large corporate customers, again, you've got always got that intrinsic. Um, operational efficiency where you've got a robust API platform, you can reuse it, you don't need to create a new API and service every single time. Uh, you can uh, more easily flex uh, the interfaces that you've got through your integration platform and provide the APIs that meets the need of, of, of those customers uh, much more simply and much more efficiently. Um, and here again, it's looking at, you know, what additional services can you offer? What value add can you offer on top of their sort of traditional banking services that you provide, uh, premium services, premium APIs that can give them more insights into the way they've been doing business or how they're handling their finances um, and giving a very easy self-service options for them to subscribe uh, and access those APIs. Again, takes away a lot of operational overhead. Uh, from uh, from your side, as well as providing very quick uh, way of of onboarding new customers and generating new new revenue. So when you're looking at sort of expanding that further to this wider ecosystem, as the sort of the banking regulations or as the the, the banks in your area want to uh, expand and improve that API ecosystem, um, this is where. Uh, you having a, that flexible API platform um, enables you to scale that that appropriately because you know, as as different system uh, service providers, the party providers come on board, uh, you've got to be able to scale that platform, make sure that uh, you know you're giving good levels of service to everyone that the APIs are available, and having uh, investing in that sort of robust uh, platform up front really helps um, avoid uh, sort of uh, costly errors when uh, you suddenly uh, get a lot, a lot of utilization of your uh, APIs. Um, and this, uh, this really allows you to, to, to access a much wider ecosystem of customer services um, with different sort of revenue models, uh, offering or embedding your banking um, services uh, into other platforms, uh, banking as a platform, uh, really you know, looking for innovative ways where something you've invested heavily in or you've got a really rich data set on, how do you uh, leverage that to give value to end customers or partners uh, or work with other partners to, to generate that for your customers? Um, now, on the sort of open access side, um, when you're sort of comfortable enough and you want to, you know, really uh, open up those, those APIs. Um, the key aspect here is that simple partner onboarding uh, to scale faster. So having that open access to the API, self-service onboarding, uh, good security, um, able to scale those services as they become popular or amend them and change them if, uh, if they're not being utilized, those sort of platform, uh, the API platforms are critically enable you to do that so that you can really explore and expand the opportunities that this open, uh, open data and open API in the finance space is, is, is giving you. Because uh, the bottom line, if you can't do that, you're going to get left behind um, and others will innovate before you. So, um, API, achieving your business goals with APIs sort of comes down into uh, a few key aspects in our, in our view. So cutting costs and doing more. So that efficiency, that digital transformation, uh, scaling uh, new revenue streams, uh, quickly onboarding new customers or offering wider services to attract them, uh, deliver that more highly personalized customer view. Uh, or keeping ahead of that digital disruption, you know, as uh, new things get innovative, you know, how are you, are you actually developing those or are you, you know, fast following and, and, and keeping up with, uh, with your competition? 
So these are sort of key, uh, some of the key aspects of what you might uh, want to aim at with your uh, APIs. And we're going to do another quick poll. So uh, which of these goals is the highest priority for your bank? What, what would you say is of the most value um, that you would be looking to get out of an API strategy, API platform? And we'll give you a minute or so to uh, fill that in if you can, please. I'm just waiting for some uh, answers to come in. Okay, we've got a few coming in now. Thank you very much. We'll see uh, how that works out. Okay, it seems like the uh, most popular one uh, at the moment is uh, scaling new revenue streams. Um, focus also on cutting costs and onboarding uh, new customers. So no one at the moment has gone for the personalized customer experiences or uh, the digital disruption. Cool, that's fine. Okay, I think we've got it all there. Thank you very much for that. Um, that sort of that that's that's interesting to see. I think the you know this is you know that that sort of leads into the what we were seeing potentially on the uh, the spectrum of where you are with with APIs and you know taking that next step to um, really look at the the advantage you can gain and working that wider in ecosystem is is a, a little bit uh, harder to achieve. Okay, let's. Um, Let's uh, move on. So uh, we've got this uh, an interesting sort of graph here from uh, InnoPay, which is looking at the open banking. Uh, and this was back in November 2020. Um, so this was showing um, where the different sort of banks and service providers were um, with their sort of API functional scope and developer experience. Um, so as I said at the beginning, um, the key thing here is you might have the most functionally rich API in existence, and it might be uh, wonderful from, from that perspective. But if it's really hard to uh, access or difficult to consume, uh, you're not going to get a lot of utilization. So you've got to be looking to be in that top right hand quadrant where you've got a really comprehensive developer experience where it's easy to access and easy to utilize, and you're giving a rich API scope you're giving the services and data people need to, to work with uh, that can help, you know, uh, grow your business as well. So you've got to think on that sort of spectrum, where, where would you like uh, to, to aim for? And you can see some of the, the leaders in that space as well. So um, if we look at, um, again, this was uh, uh, from the end of last uh, year and the beginning of this year around what sort of APIs uh, are banks actually uh, building and this is around the um, open banking open finance quarterly reports uh, as you can see obviously payments and accounts are uh, a key there but there was the regulations that were uh, sort of driving um, a lot of those um, next popular is around um, identity and authorization which is obviously an absolutely key aspect uh, of um, uh, of delivering these uh, services um, and things like the ATM locations and public APIs were um, delivered as well. So the, the other one that really stands out is your credit scoring loan pre-approval. So it looks like it's been very popular to use the availability of this information to improve uh, loan services. And we've got an example of that coming up uh, where, you know, instead of waiting for people to send lots of information by mail, uh, people can give access uh, to the to the up to date, uh, accurate and uh, trustworthy information via open banking, which means that um, that uh, those loan approvals uh, and decision making and the risk associated with those decisions 
uh, can be greatly reduced. And you can see that that, that was quite uh, a popular area. Um, so given those sort of examples, um, we'll do another quick poll. Uh, what sort of API products um, would you be looking to launch within the next six months? So out of the examples we've shown there, what, um, what do you think would uh, add most benefit to you or your customers? So I'll give you another uh, 30 seconds or so to, to fill that in and we'll see what, uh, see what everyone thinks. See if we've got anything coming in yet. Okay, looks like we're getting some uh, some results. Okay. Um, yeah, in line with. Uh, with what we saw on that chart, um, sort of KYC and authorization are looking very, very popular. Um, payments and credit scoring, loan approvals are also um, popular ones that uh, people want to see. Uh, some other services, which would be interesting, uh, you know, if you want to drop anything in the uh, Q&A as to what other services you're launching, and if it's not secret, that would be uh, <laughs> interesting to hear. Um, but yeah, so that's sort of following uh, what we're uh, uh, what we're seeing in other um, other areas as well. Cool. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, so uh, if we look at some of these examples I was talking about, uh, so this is the Regional Australia Bank and a part of Basic, um, and this is where using APIs and the available data. Um, you know, it enabled applications to be, uh, loan applications to be filled in in under 10 minutes. So lots of uh, availability of pre-populating data because they can consent for access to it. Um, and, you know, uh, in increasing the number of uh, sort of transactions they can do. And that date, using that data that they've got, you can risk, risk assess and give the money in under 90 minutes. Now, those sort of, that sort of service level uh, that sort of approach is 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 becoming more and more the norm of what the end customer is is ex, is expecting. You know, from digital services, you know, they don't expect to sort of send away piles of paper and wait uh, wait three weeks and go backwards and forwards. You know, they want to get it online, fill in only the data they have to fill in. So that pre-population is really key in in um, in sort of any sort of application process. Uh, I know um, that was something that uh, when I worked with the government, that was absolutely uh, really welcomed by the end users when we didn't ask them to fill in data we already had. Uh, and that really improves your user experience, really improves um, customer satisfaction and sort of recommendations, word of mouth, uh, that sort of thing, and providing that sort of excellent service. So those sort of things are absolutely uh, critical. So uh, another example, uh, is um, BBVA. Um, so they've got um, the BBVA point of sale service, services. Um, so they've got lots and lots of information about what's bought, where, by who. So obviously under very strict uh, data regulations, aggregating that data and anonymizing that data uh, can be very valuable uh, to end users. So, um, providing that back into the retail sector or various other sectors, they can monetize that data. They can um, sell those insights uh, that people can then use for their decision-making and having that easily accessible uh, via APIs delivered, you know, um, nigh on real time would be a massive advantage uh, in understanding how customers are buying products, where they're buying products, um, and what their sort of habits and behaviors are. So this is a real sort of um, sort of big data uh, analytics uh, use case uh, where 
you know, instead of just using that or keeping that information internally, externalizing that as a new service and making a new rev revenue stream on it uh, is really sort of helping uh, bolster the bank's uh, business. Um, so again, BBVA, a good example of sort of a, uh, a, a, a banking, uh, embedding your banking services. So enabling um, um, other uh, providers to uh, embed your services in their systems and platforms. Um, and that sort of direct, you know, all of that's done via APIs, uh, enabling to use your payment services or uh, other uh, account services directly uh, within uh, sort of partner applications and flows um, really helps um, uh, expand that sort of uh, business model, that business ecosystem. You know, you've got robust services that you've developed, and we're not only seeing this in uh, in in the in the, the banking sector. We're also seeing this in sort of uh, the retail sector that have sort of banking and payment services as well. You know, looking to not just use them for their own. Uh, customers and own own stores but looking to sell those to sort of smaller um, uh, smaller companies uh, where they might not have the ability to develop those services themselves so another good opportunity for expanding those business models and making it very easy for people to adopt those using uh, an api strategy and api platform um, Again, uh, ABN uh, AMRO um, offering uh, a new sort of product platforms and a developer marketplace coming along to try it. So this is where, you know, we were talking about that third stage where you can, you know, sign up to their platform, get access to all of the APIs, try them, play with them, innovate on them, uh, and hopefully generate a, uh, a business service uh, that, uh, that that really uh, makes them stand out in the marketplace. Um, and from that and from people using your APIs to do that, you can uh, sort of generate those uh, additional business services and revenue streams um, and sort of get, get a piece of that market share from the sort of the fintechs and the, uh, the payment services. Um, offering additional... Um, uh business account insights or account insights again this is a, a, a pretty basic use of, of apis and access to data you know if you've got more data uh, and you're using sort of robust analytics and uh, data mining um being able to offer those insights back to uh the your, your customers so that they can you know make faster better decisions or change the way that they're doing something or invest differently or you know those sort of services are absolutely key so that's you know <laughs> if you see that in things like wealth management as well you know if people have got aggregated data sources from multiple banks you can offer them uh, different services saying well actually if you move this from here to here you can make uh, you know more interest or you can avoid uh, you know uh, avoid any issues or tax or things like that so you can you know give people better advice advice on how to sort of manage their money or how to do business better um, through your sort of banking uh, platform or provide them the data for them to do the analysis themselves and that's again some sort of premium service that you can provide on top of uh, sort of the core apis um, just to uh, remind everyone if you can um if you have any questions or queries on anything we've talked about uh today uh please do pop them into the q a and we will uh look at them um after there's a q a section on the uh zoom app so do uh, uh do use that if you uh if you can so if we move on to uh some of our sort of key key learning so this is something that i definitely saw uh, through the sort of open banking PS2 implementation in the in the UK, uh, there was a lot of reluctance uh, to share data. You know, um, it's you know when you look at your banking data, it's yours. You want to keep it. You don't want to share it. You don't want to expose it. Expose it. Obviously, with the uh, uh, regular PS2 regulations, uh, there wasn't a choice to not expose it. 
um, but there was a definite reluctance to engage and make it a, a seamless, smooth process. Um, now, you can sort of understand that, but um, the, the, the key message we got there is that, you know, just meeting, doing the bare minimum to meet compliance isn't going to grow your business. It just means that you're not going to suffer, you know, if you're in a compliance situation, you're not going to suffer any fines. What it's not doing is enabling you to utilize that as an opportunity to look at these new business models, look at different ways of using your data or working with partners uh, to use your data or working with partners data as well uh, to uh, grow and adopt new business models and move forward uh, in this space because things are going to keep changing uh, faster and faster. Um, you know, there's, it's, you know, in the finance space, you know, we've gone from open banking and open finance, but this open smart data approach is working its way across all different verticals and sectors. Uh, and when you look at the possibilities of combining that uh, and utilizing data from different verticals and different uh, industry sectors with finance information to provide better services and uh, better insights or, you know, there you've got a, a wealth of opportunity there and doing the bare minimum for compliance might not give you the capability uh, to really leverage and play in that uh, in that space. So um, one of our key learnings was don't be scared to share the data. Obviously, it's got to be done securely, but you know, you, you've got to look at the opportunities and how you're going to move your business forward in this space. Um, and that leads on nicely to um, building an API business strategy, not an, API, uh, an IT strategy. So, you know, you can quite easily just, you know, focus on the technology, focus on, you know, I'm doing REST APIs, I'm exposing that account information, and that's great, end of story. That's not a, a business strategy. You know, it's what are you doing that for? What's the end goal of trying to uh, expose that data or look at new ways to sort of monetize that data or use it to improve customer experience and improve your customer base, and increase your customer base. Um, all of that comes down to a business strategy as well. So looking at it from, from that aspect is absolutely um, a, a, a key lesson is although IT is inherently technical, um, it's there to facilitate your business strategy. There's no point in just doing something for IT sake. Having a really cool API is brilliant, but if you're not using it to achieve a business goal, there's no point. So really looking at this working, um, not just uh, in the IT space, but working with your product development and your, your business teams on how do we utilize these opportunities to generate those uh, business opportunities and how do we use this to meet business goals? Uh, and making sure that's aligned in the strategy is absolutely, absolutely key. Uh, and the other one is get the platform fundamentals right, because this is a fast uh, moving, um, evolving space um, and having the right flat platform with the reliability and flexibility are key. So uh, one of the other things that was done um, was sort of publishing stats on open banking APIs and things like that. Now, if you start to look at those open stats and who's performing well, whose APIs are available, who's got the, uh, the lowest uh, error rate on API calls and stuff, all that affects how your customers and how the, the market will perceive you as a service supplier. So having a reliable platform um, using um, technologies and approaches that means that you've got the best uh, availability uh, and you're um, reliably providing those APIs and data is key. Uh, as mentioned, flexibility, the space is changing, lots of APIs are coming and going, the ability to try something, innovate on it, if it doesn't work, change it, do something else. Having that inherent flexibility in the platform are, are, are critical, is critical as well. Otherwise, you know, it's gonna take you too much time to change and keep up to date with how, uh, how things are, um, moving in the market and moving in the technology space. And having that sort of key API platform really gives you an advantage in being able to quickly respond to competitor challenges, to compliance challenges, to um, just innovation. 
where you want to do something different and maybe be a market leader in a space or or you hit on that golden use case uh, that no one else has, uh, has thought about before that just explodes and uh, gives your, uh, your, 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 your organization a big advantage and a, a, a bigger attraction for, uh, for the customer base. So there are some of the sort of key takeaways that we want to make sure that uh, um, people pay attention to. Um, so what does it take to get this uh, going? Um, and again, really just want to focus uh, on a few of the, the, the points that we've talked about um, over this presentation, but these are the ones that we really think, you know, we need to focus on to drive this home. So building customer experience is faster. So, you know, with WSO2 and our partners, uh, and VS1, you know, integrating and leveraging data and services, exposing those APIs, getting those uh, products uh, to market faster is absolutely key. There's still a massive focus on that sort of end customer use case. You know, how do you make people want to do business with you? Uh, you know, in the in, in certain sectors, it's not uh, you know it's not always pleasurable to necessarily uh, work with a, an organisation. You're not doing it for you know you're not buying something cool or something. You're having to pay a bill or you're having to pay taxes. Um, in those cases, you know, you've still got to think about customer experience because the more uh, simple and efficient and streamlined you make it, the more chance that you're going to get a better brand recognition and reputation uh, in the market and attract customers because it's just so simple and easy to do business with you. And you've got to have those APIs and that robust platform to, to deliver that. Um, and, you know, this is um, those sort of customer experiences. So, yeah, we're seeing... Uh, as you saw on the different types of APIs that are being provided, you know, around sort of faster loan uh, provisioning and know your customer identity stuff, that's all great. But as this gets bigger and adoption gets uh, wider and people start innovating, you've got to be able to um, sort of uh, react to that uh, very quickly. So, you know, this is really about building a platform, not just to cope with those challenges we've said now, but to cope with the challenges of the, of the future. Um, now compliance always become, you know, can become a, a, an issue. So you've got to, um, where you're in a, in a region where compliance is required, uh, you've got to be able to deliver that quickly and robustly and ensure that you're meeting all of the uh, standards there. Um, but as I said before, compliance um, doesn't generate your business. Compliance just avoids uh, any sort of fines or, um, uh, or penalties uh, for not, uh, not meeting them uh, on the deadline. So this is where you've got to look uh, beyond that and how you can use those uh, sort of compliance and regulations uh, to improve uh, what you do. Um, now, all of the, you know, we're talking about that sort of customer experience journey of, you know, uh, providing better, uh, better services or aggregated services to the customers. You know, there's some key fundamentals uh, in providing this and that sort of like consent, you know, giving consent to access data with the customer being able to review the consents they've given and obviously as well revoking it when they don't no longer want to give uh, that data to that third party. Um, those sort of key capabilities are what you need in that platform sort of going forward. Um, the other one is security, you know, the secure customer authentication is an absolute um, key element of open banking and open data uh, in general uh, and the sort of smart data initiative. So being able to provide the identity management services, authentication, authorization, multi-factor authorization, adaptive author, uh, uh, um, authentication where for more secure transactions, you can require additional layers of or, uh, authorization before you, uh, before you transfer that large amount of money or do that very big transaction online. So again, the flexible platform enabling you to meet those challenges and the compliance may change in the future as we get the sort of cross vertical, cross sector uh, regulations and, and data sharing coming in as well. 
and having something, uh, having a platform that can deliver uh, the, um, the the marketplace uh, approach, uh, where you can easily expose uh, your APIs to your either internal departments and teams, so they can really see what you've got and how to reuse it, which is absolutely um, essential in a larger organisation where you may have, you know, dozens or hundreds of APIs. Um, being able to clearly find those, reuse them, um, avoid uh, duplicating effort, you know, is, is a real bonus. And that marketplace approach where you can have those for your internal teams and internal services providers, as well as expose that externally as well to third parties and your, uh, and your sort of uh, uh, development, uh, external developers, um, really helps that innovation uh, and gets you the ability to sort of monetize and generate those new services a lot faster. Um, obviously, as we mentioned here, security is key, uh, having good authentication authorization as well as role-based access where you may want to uh, only allow certain individuals or certain organizations to access certain APIs. Having a platform that can handle all of that is, is critical. And obviously working with uh, WC2 and VS1 uh, to deliver that platform that's something that we've done um, and uh, can do in the future so i think okay that's it from me so thank you very much uh for listening to me um and um thanks for your time today i really appreciate it um do put any questions in the q a if you've got any and we'll um uh we'll we'll take it from there uh, but i will hand back over to my colleagues. Yeah. So thanks, Chris, uh, for the for the uh, detailed uh, knowledge uh, about APIs, how APIs can benefit, etc. So, guys um, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, if there are any questions, please uh, 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 type it in the Q and A area. We are happy to address whatever questions uh, uh, you have, uh, and and see how how we can help in your API strategy, but how we can uh, collaborate and be, be, be part of it. Just just type any questions, if at all, if you have any. Yeah, it seems there's no any questions. Uh, so what we will do is, uh, uh, oh yeah, there's one uh, uh, question, yeah. Uh, yeah, so of course, uh, from uh, Raz, uh, Razidul Islam, can we have the product demonstration? Yes, we can. What we will do is, Rasidul, our team will uh, contact you and we can arrange a one-on-one -on -one session with you and your team about the product and then we can uh, go to details, yeah? Uh, then from uh, Sanju Rahman, basically we wanted to know how could we utilize the APIs in this market? So the, Chris, the question is more related to Bangladeshi market and uh, how they can use the APIs related, specifically addressing the Bangladesh market uh, situation, challenges, and the localization. So, Sachika, you want to take that? Yeah, sure. I think I'll take that. Um, because we've done a lot of work in Bangladesh uh, as well as in the, uh, in the subcontinent. Uh, so, essentially, um, in the, I mean, obviously, if you take the Bangladeshi financial ecosystem, uh, although it's a developing market, it's 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 uh, it's um, progressing very fast, and we can see a very active fintech ecosystem there as well. So uh, there are multiple ways that uh, banks can uh, basically benefit uh, by utilizing APIs. Uh, <clears throat> I think the three stages that Chris identified. Um, were a, a good roadmap. So first of all, uh, internal APIs to improve workflows, improve uh, uh, basically a workflow optimization and cut costs. Uh, and then <coughs> uh, expose um, APIs to um, you know, known partners. So obviously, uh, if, if you take any uh, Bangladeshi bank, they do have existing partners that they work with. Uh, like stockbrokers, uh, even corporate clients. Uh, so essentially, we see that that is a very easy way to um, start uh, benefiting from uh, exposing APIs. 
Uh, and of course, uh, considering the fintech ecosystem that is uh, really developing in Bangladesh, uh, I think uh, starting off with offering certain services, especially um, starting off with simple things like uh, uh, providing data feeds uh, to fintechs that are then able to better uh, articulate that or analyze that data on behalf of customers and provide value added services on top of uh, what the bank provides can really um, help gain more um, market share for the bank, uh, especially with the, um, uh, the younger generation that is uh, really adopting uh, digital products and digital uh, data. Um, so I think there are multiple ways and uh, we see a lot of um, <clears throat> patterns that emerge in the subcontinent. Uh, so it'd be really good to have a, a follow-up conversation as well so that we can talk more in detail about what uh, other uh, APIs we've helped banks with in the region. Yeah, so what we'll do is uh, we can arrange, so Rakib LinkedIn, I think most of you know Rakib. I'll ask Rakib to coordinate and uh, arrange uh, probably a, a more detailed discussions on this side uh, with one-on-one -on -one so we can address the specific challenges that you have within country. Uh, and within your organization, which is always a unique situation. And we can bring the technology team of ES1 and WSO2 together and address these specific things that you wanted to know and help you in understanding the journey altogether uh, once we understand more detail about your current environment. Yeah, so any more questions? Yeah, uh, like now we have extra. So, like now we have external API integration with the Election Commission, TIN, ETN, FS API, yeah, Samsung. Okay. Yeah. So, so, uh, yeah. So we will, uh, we will have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, session. So yes, you have. It seems, uh, uh, Sanju, you have a lot of uh, already connected parties. Uh, so we can see how we can uh, streamline it and make more efficient and effective and secure. Um, I, I, just, I just like to add, uh, Vajira, to uh, Sanju's uh, comment uh, is that, I mean, it looks like, as, as I predicted, it looks like there's a lot of external API exposure that is already happening, which is really great. Uh, but yeah. I think we can also optimize that further in terms of monetization, creating an API uh, marketplace, API products. Uh, so there are several uh, further steps uh, that you can take beyond uh, exposing APIs, but it's really um, sort of interesting to uh, see that you have already taken uh, many of the steps that uh, certain other banks are already struggling with. Uh, so uh, look forward to a conversation with you. Yeah. <coughs> okay, so Sashi, I think you need to take this solution, uh, this, this question. Many of uh, the banks you know, are introducing OSB and where, where the WSO2 is in the overall ecosystem. Uh, right, so yeah, I, I won't answer it in relation to uh, the Oracle service bus because we don't uh, track uh, you know, their deployments. Uh, but if we, uh, <coughs> if we look at the um, deployment of uh, WSO2 uh, Enterprise Integrator, it's, uh, it's done in, I mean, it's, it's it has been deployed all over the world. Uh, globally, we have uh, close to 200 um, banks and financial services organizations using our integration uh, stack globally. Uh, and we are we're quite active in the Asia Pacific region, especially in the South Asian region as well, because we have a very heavy presence in Sri Lanka as well. Uh, so uh, we can, of course, share with you uh, customer references uh, under NDA, uh, but essentially uh, we are quite widespread as well. Uh, Sanjur, yeah, such a, oh. yeah, so, yeah, uh, if you uh, have uh, any, uh, you know, independent research or independent uh, uh, organizations like Foresters to IDC to Gartners uh, in, in where WSO2 stands, because I know it's the number one uh, API platform when it comes to open source in the overall context, I think that would help to, uh, you know, understand where, where we are all together. But I think, Sanjay, if that's questions from a sort of a tech stack perspective, 
Uh, then obviously the Oracle service bus is tend to be used to provide that complex uh, integration SOA style, service oriented architecture style layer. Now the the sort of if you're looking at the sort of open banking platform, the key aspect of that, the identity and API layer, that would could use the OSB interfaces as the sort of uh, data sources we would with our own uh, micro integrator uh, or streaming integrator to provide that data as a securely managed API with all the identity and consent to the third party or end customer. So um, you know we work with many you know, uh, sort of other sort of integration uh, technologies. You don't have to use our uh, micro integrator. However, we have the same sort of capabilities as Oracle Service Bus uh, as well within the stack if needed. So, Sachi, I think the commerce question is, can we use in stock exchange? I, I don't see why we can't. Yeah. yeah, definitely, most definitely. Um, I mean, we were we were focusing a lot on the banks because we have uh, um, we have a lot of banks uh, attending the session today. But essentially, our technology has been uh, our integration technology has been used in stock exchanges, stock brokers, uh, insurance organizations, and all types of financial services organizations. Um, so definitely, um, it can be applied to the stock exchange. Um, space as well. So I think uh, that's about the Q&A session. Uh, of course, you can reach to us. And there's a poll that came up. I hope you guys have answered that. Uh, the other thing is, uh, so the recording of the video will be shared amongst all the participants. Uh, after the uh, session, uh, probably within 24 hours or after 24 hours, within tomorrow or day after, you will receive an email uh, with the recording, as well as uh, any questions that you have, any any more details you wanted to have, you can contact uh, the, the emails below, or you all know uh, Raki Blinken and Komal Bai. So you can contact those two gentlemen who will uh, uh, do the coordination and get the required meetings, required <coughs> details done. So uh, finally, thank you very much for everyone who participated. Uh, uh, I hope this added value to your understanding on APIs uh, because we, we wanted to ensure that every engagement adds value to you as customers, as prospects, as people. So hope this API session um, increases your understanding on API and make your journey easy, more understandable. Thank you, WSO2. Thank Chris. Thanks, Sashi. Uh, still, she's not well, but uh, 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 you are there, you uh, coughing, but still talking. So thank you very much for being there. And thank you, Chris, for doing a wonderful session. And thanks, everybody, for helping us to organize this. And I'm sure we can, uh, whatever queries we have, we can work together and we can enable much more customers with WSO2 platforms in Bangladesh and world. Thank you very much.